Hello again, this is Ben from Mountain Wave. I apologize for not having a uh, tutorial last week, but uh, I was doing a lecture at the university and my time was taken a little bit up on that. Uh, at any rate, what I'm going to do today is a uh, few people have asked me if you can do uh, frame sections and stuff for like say a house or a small development if they're going to redo their basement or even a deck. Um, this turns out to be a very simple thing to do in SolidWorks. I'm surprised more housing contractors actually don't use this method, but um, most of them don't actually use SolidWorks. They use AutoBAT. I mean CAD. <laughs> Great. Um, what, what you need to do actually to start with is that you're going to need a, a profile that uh, is a 2 by 4 which is what I'm going to do today. Um, this is just uh, one and a 1.5 inches by 2.5 inches, your standard 2 by 4 size. And then what I did is I added a couple of construction lines as far as uh, intersecting the midpoints and uh, into the corners themselves. And I'll show you what that's for here in a moment. And the next thing I made sure is that in the properties itself, uh, custom properties, that I had a description um, set up and uh, the description itself telling telling me what it is. Uh, again, that's for uh, when you're doing the weldment itself. It actually uh, populates the um, cut list. At that point, what you need to do is you need to do a save as. When you hit the save as, I want you to choose the library feature part and locate uh, where the rest of the profiles are in it for SolidWorks itself. What you'll notice is that it'll be in the uh, program file SolidWorks data weldment profiles. Then you can choose anti inch or ISO, uh, whichever one you actually choose to do that. And what I ended up doing is I added a folder called wood. And within the wood itself, I've created some of these parts here. At any rate, you save it. Everything's good. And you'll notice that um, you have to select the sketch itself before you save. Make sure that it's highlighted before you save, otherwise the profile actually doesn't come in properly. And you'll know that you've actually done it properly when you take a look at this icon here. It's a little different than your standard sketch, meaning that it is a profile. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll get out of that and we'll start right into uh, making the deck itself. We're going to go to the, uh, the top section, just uh, draw out a, a simple rectangle itself. Uh, one trick that I always seem to use, and i found that a lot of people actually let a lot of parts just sort of float out in space and don't fully constrain it, and this is a really simple way to get a rectangle or a square in, is that you select a construction line that bisects from corner to corner. You hit the or origin itself and you just hit coincident or you hit midpoint. Actually, I use midpoint all the time. You don't have to hit the coincident at the very beginning. In fact, that's just a redundant mate. That's really not necessary. But once that's done, we're going to make this, uh, well, let's say it's 10 feet. I'm going to zoom out. We're going to say this part here is 15 feet. And that should be good for this sketch itself. So this is going to be just the outside frame it, itself for the uh, for the 2x4 frame. At any rate, you hit weldments. You go into structural members themselves. It'll take you into, you're allowed to choose ANSI and dry. So this is um, how it's going through the uh, the folders and everything that you created. And you can see there's angle iron and all the, there's a few custom ones that I've made, but the wood, and I want 2x4. And all I have to do from this point here is actually select the sketch segments. And once that's done, uh, you know, the frame itself is pretty good, but I've also got the corners. Some of these are, you know, I've got this cut here, which is just fine for that corner. That would work uh, quite well for me, but you'll actually notice that when you come into another corner that the cut is coming here, and I don't want it necessarily to go that way. So if you actually just click on that icon there, you can change how it's cut. You know, notice how it's been reversed. It's always a good idea to, uh, oops, yeah, I seem to have flip that one by accident, but at any rate, uh, go through all the corners, make sure they're, they're cut, or that the end treatment is exactly as you'd like it to be. And you can also select to have it mitered, but uh, in this case it just doesn't make any sense, so we'll say that that's okay. And once all this is done, um, there's a little thing a lot of people don't realize, and it's called Locate Profile. So if I hit Locate Profile, you notice it takes me to the sketch that uh, um, is doing everything. And what I wanted this line, the outside line, to be is the outside, the outermost dimension of my, my deck itself. And I also wanted it to be the top of the deck. So that all being said is once I hit Locate Profile and I select one of these dots that I had originally put into the uh, profile itself, remember I said I put it in the midpoints and everything? It gives you location points that you can hit, and what it does is it relocates the profile so that it's on the line in the right orientation and where you actually want it. And we're just going to agree to that, and that looks pretty good. So now that we've got the frame itself, I want uh, on the top itself is we obviously going to have to add the slats. I'm going to do a simple, whoops, escape out of that one, and do a simple 45-degree uh, uh, 
slat across the top. We're going to start right from center to center. Of course, you know, all this uh, can change uh, due to whatever design that you actually like to do. Here, we're going to add another uh, structural member, and you'll notice that the orientation is, is incorrect, but this is fine. Again, you go to the locate profile. We want it to be 90 degrees out, so that flattens it out. And we also want the uh, center of the board itself to be right at that point, so it pops it up into the right spot, and we say that's good. So we've got one board, and the next thing, it's just a simple um, insert uh, pattern. You want a linear pattern itself. You want the direction to actually follow along that direction. Uh, I want it 3.75 inches. I want a quarter inch gap in between the boards themselves. And the feature to pattern is, okay, actually this is a really good point. The features will only actually do features, not for multi-bodies. This is a body that I actually want to pattern. So I hit body and you'll notice that it patterns out. I've done this before just as a test run, so you'll notice that I had just the right amount of uh, boards actually put into it. So that all being said, the next thing is is that sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. It's uh, kind of aggravating. I'm hoping somebody from SolidWorks will, will actually watch this and be able to see what the problem is and possibly fix it. At any rate, um, what ends up happening, I, I usually do is use a trimming boundary. I use a planar face, so I'll say I use that. Uh, sorry down here. We'll use that face as the trimming boundary for the edge of all these boards and we'll start selecting the boards themselves but you'll notice that it cuts the wrong side of the board. Um, if I select the outside of the board or any other part of the board it always trims to that side and there's no option to actually reverse where the cut is. But that's fine we're not going to use this but that, that is one thing you can try but it's not always going to work for you. So what I've ended up doing in the past is that I just actually select that board as a uh, um, plane itself and then I'm just going to do an extruded cut, set myself up normal to. You can constrain this down so that it doesn't, you know, screw up any of your, your geometry and stuff. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use an unconstrained sketch and uh, do a c complete cut. We're just going to do not blind. You go through all, makes things a little simpler, and it cuts off all those boards exactly where I want them to be. Do the exact same thing on this part is you use an extruded cut. Again, you make the rectangle. I'm going to say that's good. And we're going to do a through all, and we're going to reverse the direction. So now we've got half the deck is already laid out and stuff. This is all, all great. Um, at that point, you know, you can finish everything off, but I'm going to try to keep this uh, tutorial fairly short. We're going to make a drawing from this part. And you always have to save before you make a drawing itself. So we're just going to go to the deck top, desktop and uh, we're going to save it as part two and I'm going to use just make a drawing of it I'll just use a simple simple piece here or a simple uh, sheet format that actually comes installed with SolidWorks and we've got these these two parts here well you know this is all fine and dandy but uh, a lot of people want to know how long these boards are and everything and uh, possibly be able to get everything for uh, being able to do a, a decent cut list and being able to buy the appropriate amount of lumber. So if you can select the drawing view itself, do insert, it's a table, your weldment cut list out here. At any rate, we'll actually put that cut list in. Of course the the size and everything is, is a little oversized for um, for this uh, sheet format, but you know I'm sure you guys all get the general thing. But you'll notice that there's nothing populated in that, and that's that's a simple thing to correct. Is we're going to toggle back to the to the deck itself, and you'll notice that in the feature manager you have a cut list. What I want, to, uh, and you'll notice that all the the bodies themselves are in there, and they're not actually put into a list. If you right click on it, and you hit update, what it does is it actually places um, like boards, like length boards, and uh, cuts into each individual folder. So it makes you have uh, this end piece and the other end piece are one piece or one size. So in the cut list, it'll tell you you need to cut two of them. So it organizes everything really nicely. Again, this is Ben from Mountain Wave at www.mountain-wave.ca. Hopefully this tutorial was good for you, uh, maybe taught you something that you can use in your work. Uh, let me know if you have any unique uses of this. I'm always open to new ideas and great concepts and how to make my life a little easier, and uh, hopefully it makes yours as well. I guess I'll talk to you guys next week.